If you read in the Bible anywhere about angels, I did a whole teaching called Angels Go, where we went in depth on the kinds of angels and the ministry of angels. And these are amazing creations by God. Uh, we know that before Satan fell, that God made him with instruments in his being. I can't imagine what that was like. We know that Michael is the warring angel. Gabriel is the musical angel. We know there's cherubim. We know there's seraphim. We know they were in the holy of holies. We know that they accompany God. We know that when Jesus came out of the wilderness, they attended him. And these are awesome creatures with one Isaiah saw them. With wings, they covered their eyes. With wings, they covered their feet. And with others, they flew. He saw three sets of wings on one angel. This was amazing. The Bible says when they came to the tomb and they saw the angels there beside the tomb with the, with the stone rolled away, that they shook and became as dead men. So these people that tell me I saw an angel last night or an angel visits me every Tuesday, you ain't seen what the Bible describes because this is a great and awesome sight. The angel of the Lord split the heavens and began to speak straight to a 15-year-old girl. And the Bible never said that she was troubled at what she saw. I know that the Roman soldiers saw it and shook and became as dead men. But she saw it. She had no problem with the angelic presence that she was having. She had no problem with the visitation that was coming out of the sky. She had a problem with what he was saying. Because she was troubled at what manner of greeting this was. Not troubled that she had seen something she had never seen before. Not troubled that she thought she had seen a ghost. Not troubled that she had heard this myth about angels and one of them showed up. She was troubled not about the angel, not about the scenery, not about the experience. She was troubled at what he said. You are favored of the Lord. The Lord is with you. And you're blessed. Those are the three things that are intertwined together. It's not just favor by itself. It is God coming in a way with his blessing, coming in a way with things that are uncommon, unexplained, undeserved, have no rationale behind it, and it just breaks open in your life. And if you've never experienced it, it's one of the most amazing experiences in life. Somebody say the favor of God. I feel like preaching now. Whew, hallelujah, I feel like preaching now. You have got to understand the season that you're in to fully embrace its purpose. One thing I have sought to do and attempted to do is try to be able to identify the season that I'm in in life. Have I always been able to do that with accuracy? I think not, but hopefully I've missed it. I've got it right more times than I've missed it and got it wrong. Because if you understand the season that you're in, the Bible says everything is beautiful in its season. Everything is beautiful in its time. God attaches a time to every purpose under heaven. And when you get what God is doing and the season of your life in sync, something beautiful takes place in your life. So you got to be able to recognize the season you're in. And she was having a hard time seeing the season that she was in. Why? Because she didn't understand. She already had plans. Come on, somebody. She already had plans. Understanding the season you're in. Uh, let me give you another example. The king, the man of God, Elisha, with an S, Elisha, right before his death, came to uh, King Joash. And he told King Joash, he said, I want you to strike the ground. And he struck the ground three times. And the man of God, Elisha, the Bible said he became frustrated. Why? Because however many times he struck the ground was going to be how many victories the Lord was going to give him. God free us from small expectations. God deliver us and break now us from having small expectations. Let me just get off on a tangent. I feel the Holy Ghost. God wants to break some people from this small expectation of him because the greatest thing God wants is to be believed. And the thing that hurts him the most is to be doubted. 
crowded and we've seen so much trouble and we've watched so much news and we've been so many videos on YouTube and we've heard so many things out of the CDC and we've seen so many things out of stock market and economy and racial tension and, and political tension and all these other things that sometimes it drains you of your expectation. But the man of God became frustrated. He said, I don't care what's going on around you when it comes to God, you keep striking the ground. And I want to tell you something. I don't care what's going on around you. When God shows up, you got to understand the season you're in. And when God is giving you favor, don't sit there and just take a little bit and say, I'm all right. I'll open that door all the way open. Keep striking that ground and let God continue to give you the victory. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Hey, hallelujah. I bless your name, oh God. Y'all give me some time. I'm rolling now. I'm rolling. Hallelujah. I bless your holy name. I bless your holy name. I got about five points I want to make. Here's one of the main ones, so I'm going to say it slow. I'm going to calm down. <laughs> I told you a few minutes ago she was not troubled at what she saw. Most of us would have been. She was troubled at what he said because she was engaged to Joseph. In Hebrew custom, weddings are a feast. Weddings are filled with wine and food and celebration. Jesus' first miracle was at a wedding turning water into wine. So the first thing God showed up in was in a couple getting married. In Hebrew custom, this is not in the Bible, but Hebrew customs, if you study it, the man and his bride would live in his father's house for a year with no labor, <laughs> just so they could fall in love and get to know one another. And you better believe this girl who is betrothed to Joseph, she had plans of what her wedding would look like. She had plans of how her hair would be done. It's no different from today. In fact, it may have been more so then than today. She had no, she, she knew exactly what she wanted her dress to look like. And she would lay in bed at night and imagine the day that she would be married. And she imagined what that first year would be like as they ceased from labor and just got to know one another. You better believe she had all these things planned out because she was already engaged, and if you would allow me, that's just what women do. Hallelujah. She had it planned out. So the saying of God said, this is the time of the Lord's favor. God is with you. You are blessed. He goes on to say, you shall conceive a child. He shall be Emmanuel, God with us. You shall call his name Jesus. The reason she's troubled is because it is a disruption. Wait a minute, you're telling me something that does not line up with my plan. We dated, we were engaged, we were going to get married, we did it step by step and we were doing it the right way. Now you're going to put me under great suspicion because I've never known a man and I'm not married to a man but I'm carrying a child. You're going to let me be the butt end of jokes, you're going to let me be the focal point of whispers and snarls when I walk past. You're going to make me have to leave my familiarity. You're going to make me have to go find somebody like my cousin Elizabeth who's carrying John the Baptist in her womb that I can identify with. Oh God, you have just come with your favor and disrupted my whole life. I wonder who out there has ever had the favor of God come in a great way, but it disrupted some other stuff in another way. You no longer are what country you hail from or what cultural distinctive you have, for we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we might show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And my allegiance, stay with me, and my allegiance to that nation supersedes every other allegiance. As believers, we're called to be together and not separated from each other. In this series, Ron Carpenter shows us the power of being in unity. It is our collective that is supposed to push darkness back. 
out of our communities, out of our schools, come on, out of our cities, out of our regions. If anything's going to happen in this area, it's going to start in rooms like this one right here. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Hey guys, don't leave me because we are getting right back to the Word. I want you to hear the rest of this message in its entirety. But we do like to take a little bit of time in the middle to do a thank you and to do an offer. Uh, first of all, the thank you. I cannot tell you the gratitude with which I come to you today and thank you for helping us do what we do. This is a viewer-supported program. Totally and entirely. Let me say that again, totally and entirely. Uh, we do other things in media where we have advertisers and we sell ads, but not anything that you get through your television. It is because great people have said, I receive from this and I'm blessed by this and I want to turn around and bless it back. And so we want to thank you all the way from 1998 until now, no matter what time you entered a relationship with us, we're grateful for your gift, no matter how great or how small it may have been. Everyone participating is what helps us take this all over the world. And it is now going all over the world, thanks to you. Secondly, I would like to make an offer for maybe those who have started to watch, or this is your first time watching, and it's blessing you. And the Bible says, let him who is taught share in all good things with him who teaches. God desires a reciprocation. In other words, if something or someone blesses my life and alters it in a positive way, then I have an obligation to turn around and make sure that that person's not depleted for filling me up, but that I take that blessing and turn around and fill them back up. Would you consider being a blessing with this ministry? Would you consider a one-time gift or becoming a covenant partner, a monthly giver? We have this gift for your first time gift of any amount that we want to give you, we want to say thank you, and we want to welcome you into the family. I believe the greatest days for us are yet ahead, and I want everybody to be a part of this family that can. Now together, we're gonna to take this message to the world. Let's get back to the Word. Favor's coming, favor's coming, favor's coming. Moses was fine, but the favor of God came that day at a burning bush and changed and disrupted his life. Noah was fine. But Noah, you're favored of God. You're going to save the planet. All these people fine. And God just comes and disrupts their life. Abram was fine. But God said, I'm going to change your name to Abraham. You're going to become the father of nations and bear a child at 100 years old. Disrupting his life. David was fine tending sheep. But the favor of God came on him. And disrupted his life. Lord, I pray right now that we would quit criticizing. I pray right now we would quit critiquing and criticizing the interruptions of our life. And let us especially quit pointing at every one of them and blaming them on the devil. The devil does not run our life. The devil is not in charge of our life. We embrace life's disruptions as the blessing of the Lord. Can we right now, even though I'm only about halfway through, put our hands together and give God a praise? I feel something happening in my spirit right now. Hallelujah. God can give you favor, but Deuteronomy 127, you can fall out of favor. And you complained in your tents. The King James Version said you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hates us, he's brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the, hand of the Amorites. Murmuring in your tents. Look at God's response. And the Lord heard the sound of this and was angry and took an oath saying, surely not one of these men of this evil generation will see the good land of which I swore to your fathers. God can release favor on your life undeserved, without rationale, unnecessary, with no reason. But you can fall out of favor with God when you misinterpret what it is and murmur in your tents. Don't let what we've been through the last two years turn you into a complainer. Don't let what we've walked through give you a negative outlook. 
Don't let what we've gone through cause you to have no faith and doubt your God. Don't let it cause you to get around with other people and begin to complain and murmur and grumble back and forth as, as though we were people who had no God. They murmured in their tents and they complained because they didn't like the way the Lord was handling their journey. And when they complained, they fell out of the Lord's favor and said, I favored you in such a way to give you a land that you didn't build. I give you, come on, come on, I give you houses you didn't build. The Bible says, I'll give you uh, wells you didn't dig and I'll give you vineyards you didn't plant. All that was the favor of God. Why? Because God wanted to. But that generation never got to enjoy it because they did not understand the season, the time they were in. And they complained against the Lord and never got to see what he had favored them with in the first place. <laughs> Look at a couple of people and say, stop your complaining. <laughs> that might be the only time you get to tell your wife or husband that is when I said that in a service, said again, say, we got to quit our complaining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> People don't mind favor when you say you have it. It's when you manifest it, they hate you. You can shake everybody's hand coming in the church door and say, I'm blessed and highly favored, and nobody minds. But drive up next week in a different brand new car and walk in and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Give an offering on a level you've never given before because God has blessed you in a way. Come walking in with a relationship they know you don't deserve. Come walking in with a date that's way above your head. <laughs> and people don't mind the favor. I got it written here. When you, when you say it, they mind the favor when you manifest it. <laughs> uh, Jacob gave his son Joseph. A coat, we call it the coat of many colors. <coughs> Everybody was fine with Joseph until he wore his coat. When he wore his coat, they hated him. Not because of the coat, but because of what the coat represented. The coat represented Joseph's favor with his father. And when the brothers saw that he was the favored one of the father, they began to hate on him. I'm here to warn you about favor. I'm here to let you know that it's all right as long as you say it. And some of you have been screaming favor in this service, and some of you stood up and praised louder than anybody else. And those people that you were going out with after church, they're fine with you getting up and shouting about it. But when your life begins to get elevated further than theirs, and you begin to move past where they are economically and past where they are, maybe career-wise, past where they are in some other form of life, then all of a sudden you see an attitude begin to change. Why? Because favor is a revealer of the hearts of those around you. If people around you cannot celebrate the favor of God on your life, then you need to check and see whether or not they need to be there. I need people around that don't just want to see me work, that don't just want to see me believe, and don't just want to see me fast, and don't want to just see me pray. But when the blessing of the Lord comes, hallelujah, I want them to clap. I want them to shout. I want them to be in my corner celebrating the blessing of the Lord. Every Everybody needs a few people in your life that when God does something great, they're more happy for you than they are for themselves. Does anybody want some friends like that? Shout yes. <laughs> they're all right when you say it. They just hate it when you wear it. Favor is a revealer of those around you. I'm go I got to move fast. 
Thirdly, <laughs> favor is not when God talks to you. Favor is when God talks to someone about you. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Boaz saw Ruth. And by the way, you have to be seen to have favor. That's why I don't like to be represented. And I know that you have to pay for representation sometimes because sometimes you don't know what to do like with a lawyer or you couldn't get in the door without it. But I've always felt like I had a great shot if I got within somebody's sight that the favor of God would incline their heart toward me. Don't be mad at me for that. I've just always believed that even from the days of my youth, if I could just get in front of somebody, I want to be seen by them. And Ruth said, tell me where the field is of him in whose sight I might find favor. She realized until she got in a location where she was within sight of Boaz that favor could not come. And then when she got in that location and Boaz noticed her and saw her, he began to go to the workers in the field and said, who is the woman? <laughs> so Boaz was not speaking to Ruth. Boaz was speaking to the reapers in the field about Ruth. Favor is not when God starts talking to you. Favor is when God starts talking to somebody who has the power to bless you. Favor is when God starts talking to somebody who has the ability to open a door you can't open. Favor is when God starts talking to somebody to do something for you that you don't have the ability to do for yourself. Favor is when God tells somebody to pay your debts off that you don't have the money to pay. Favor is when God gives opportunities that you would never be able to get to with your own own education or your own tenure that is what the favor of God does and God is about to take a beggar named Ruth and move her from the background to the forefront and when she marries Boaz she will be partnership in the inheritance of all of his wealth do you understand that she started in one place but favor moved her through 50 levels to another place and I believe favor is about to move some people today you're not going to have to go through those things step by step and level by level but when favor comes, it catapults you to another place. I'm going to give you five more seconds to lift up the name of the Lord. I feel him in this place. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember when Hope and I moved to California. For those of you who don't know, it wasn't just California. It was the Silicon Valley of California, <laughs> which is now the wealthiest zip code in the world, just past London and Dubai. Yes. So my southern economy did not translate. God was always gracious to us. We always lived the blessed life. God was always good to us, <clears throat> but it did not translate into that new world. We knew, me and Hope knew, that in California, if we were going to ever get out of an apartment, that God was going to have to meet us with uncommon favor because our own means could not allow us to achieve that. And I didn't want to be at this season in my life and not have a place for my family. It's hard when you've been in a house for 20 years. And then you move out of that and give it up with no hope of getting it back. But we came knowing it was going to take favor. And God took a Muslim man from Pakistan. Whose house was nowhere within the reach of our economy. We found favor with him in a housing market that was ridiculous. And to make an amazing long story short, and I mean when I say Muslim, I'm not talking about casual. I'm talking about face the east three times a day and pray Muslim. 
who when we told him what we were doing, he began to watch my videos, listen to my sermons, and watch my life, and he called me back. I never made an offer. I never wrote up a contract. He said, I want you to have my house, and he took that house, and he began to customize it around my economy to put me in it in one of the best housing markets in ever in history. Nobody does that. And the realtors and everybody shook their head and said, what in the world? You pulled up here from all the way across the nation and a man who doesn't even have the same faith as you is blessing you this way. Somebody say, it's the favor of God. It's the favor of God. It's the favor of God. Oh, I want that favor, that favor, that F-O-G, that fog, that favor of God to fill the room, to fill your house, to fill the air right now. I want you to hope again. I want you to believe again. But understand, it is a revealer. Joseph was put in prison two times. He was put in there one time by Potiphar, and he was put in there another time by Pharaoh. And neither time because of anything he had done, but because of his favor. I want to take a minute because I think the greatest thing I could do is not offer you a teaching, not offer you a program, not offer you a ministry. The greatest thing I could offer you is Jesus. He changed my life profoundly. He, he, he showed me things inside of me that I never knew I had. He took me into a life that I never began to even realize could be a part of my future. And um, it has been my goal in life to give him away to everybody I can. Do you know him? And if you don't, it's real easy. Uh, you've been told wrong if you think there's a lot of things you got to do and a lot of things you got to quit and all that. All that stuff gets ironed out as you grow in your relationship with God. But right now, all you have to do is believe. Jesus is the Son of God and He died for your sins and you can be saved. That's it. It is a gift. It's not something you work for. It's not wages. It's a gift. The prayer goes like this. I thank you, Lord, that you died and rose again for my salvation. I thank you for the price you paid. I believe you are God's son sent from heaven to wash me of my sins. I ask you to come live in my heart, be my Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, call in, write in, do something, let us know. You just made the greatest decision you can ever make. Until next time, God bless you. You no longer are what country you hail from or what cultural distinctive you have. For we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we might show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And my allegiance, stay with me, and my allegiance to that nation supersedes every other allegiance. As believers, we're called to be together and not separated from each other. In this series, Ron Carpenter shows us the power of being in unity. It is our collective that is supposed to push darkness back out of our communities, out of our schools, come on, out of our cities, out of our regions. If anything's going to happen in this area, it's going to start in rooms like this one right here. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.